Hi there, this is Mike Gidding from Third Eye Geoscience. I run a workshop on delivering better and faster seismic interpretations by working primarily in the 3D window in Petrel. One way that we can push that efficiency even further is by choosing better input devices. So today we're going to have a look at the 3D connection products and in particular the Space Mouse line. So the product that you see here is the Space Mouse Enterprise. They also have a slightly smaller device called the Space Mouse Pro and a portable device called the Space Mouse Wireless. For Petrel, I don't think you need anything better than the Space Mouse Pro. I certainly don't think you need the product that I have here, the Space Mouse Enterprise. So what does it do? Well, when we're working in the 3D window, one of the things that we have to do a lot is change into view mode. So at the moment I'm in manipulate plane mode. To get into view mode, I would hit escape or V for view, and then I can move the plane around. Okay, I can zoom in and out, that sort of stuff. That can be frustrating when you're working in 3D a lot, and can affect your productivity. With the space mouse, you can control the view with your offhand, normally your left hand, but sometimes people are the opposite. And in doing so, we are still in the mode that we were in, whether that be view mode or fold interpretation or seismic interpretation, whatever. So for interpreters, geomodelers, anybody that's using the 3D window a lot, this is already a, a massive time saver and sanity saver because you're not constantly hitting the escape key. So how does it work? In the middle of this thing we have a puck, and that puck has a number of degrees of movement. If I pull it up and push it down, I can zoom in and out like so. If I rotate it like a joystick, I can rotate the plane like so. If I translate it, up or down or left or right, I can pan my view. And if I spin it like a volume knob, I can rotate the whole thing in the same manner. So those are the degrees of movement. In addition, there are a bunch of hotkeys around the outside which are programmable, and they're very easy to program. And uh, we can talk about those in a second when we get into the settings. Before we do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly run through one exercise that I use the Space Mouse for in a almost essential way. Uh, doable without, but much quicker with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my fault framework. When I've built a volume based model, the first thing I do is build a structural framework. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone the window and then I'm going to split that into a new tab group. And I've got the little orange binoculars turned on called Link This Camera. If I turn that off then one will move and the other won't, but we want them linked. And you can see that we've got the same thing dancing on both sides of the screen. On the left hand side I'm going to turn all of my interpretation off. So all I've got is the plane on this side. And since it's the same plane, when we move it back and forth, both planes move. Now, if I bring up my structural model and my fault framework, and I go to the fault relationships, now I've done all of this, and you can see that they're all verified, but let's say that they weren't, and we wanted to look at an individual fault. So if I move that down there and put that fault over on the left side, I can see I've got two faults here coming together and joining here. Now, do I want the green fault to be truncated by the blue fault or the other way around? So my little mantra here is decide what you want to happen over on the right hand view where you've got all of your interpretation and then view it on the left side and then implement what you want to happen on the, on the left hand side. So over here we will move forward and we'll see that in fact, yes, if we, if we line that up, that at this point 
the green fault is terminated by the blue fault and the direction of that seems to be consistent with the blue fault being straight. If, we, if the green fault were to carry on that would have a kink in it. So we don't want that. So we're happy with that. And then we would tick that and move on to the next fault. And so by doing that with, without having to ever go into escape mode, into view mode, what we're doing is we're, we're making this whole process much, much faster. Now, of course, we could set it up that we have our manipulate plane on one screen and over on this screen we could have the view mode going on and then of course we'd be able to do it that way but this way just gives you the flexibility once you start adding faults or extending faults and and checking multiple faults you know if we go into here and go show all connected um, then it becomes increasingly complex to see what's going on by going back and forth over here to move the view and then over here to move the plane so I would rather have the ability to move this plane without having to really think about it. And it will take you maybe four or five hours to get used to this manipulation. After that, it will become second nature. Okay, so let's close that for the, for the moment and have a quick look at the settings. So if I press the settings button on the, on the uh, Space Mouse, uh, I've got a few different options here. I've got a general speed setting here, which I normally keep very low. And then uh, under advanced settings, I get to change the speed of each of those directions of movement individually. And so you can see that, uh, you know, panning I keep the same whether it's up or down or left and right, but I find that the zoom, for example, needs to be slower and that the rotation needs to be faster. So you've got control over all of that. We can also press on the buttons button and under here we can specify Petrel hotkeys and link them to the buttons around the side of, of the device. Um, many more buttons here than I use which is why I'd recommend the, um, the Space Mouse Pro as opposed to this one and the LCD display is actually not that useful so I'd suggest the, the the model down from this will save you a few hundred dollars so if I go into one of these and go into macros and edit that 2D macro you can see I've given it a name I've given it the hotkey for 2D auto track and and that's as simple as it is you can actually even specify radial buttons so that you can have more than one option for a given button but because I've got so many keys I don't use those. Um, all very simple. So for example on, on this device I have um, manipulate plane is, is M so I can move back and forth. I can also set page up and page down so that I can do that very very simply. Um, I've got restrict mode so if I go over here um, I have to make sure that something's active if I make 25 active for example and then go um, and press restrict mode or restrict all it's a different button all of these things become much quicker if you've got hot keys for, hot keys for them okay so how do we get this thing working on your machine well first of all you need to get one of the devices you need to install the driver and then you just basically configure it the way that I've already shown. What becomes more difficult is if you're working remotely. And you've got two options. You can either sort this out so that you can work remotely, um, so you've got a, a local dumb terminal and a remote um, blade system or something like that. You can either go with a software solution the company that uh, I know works is Fabula Tech, which is basically USB for remote desktop. Or you can go for a hardware solution from HP called Teradici or HP Anywhere. It's the same thing. And you can see here uh, there's a video of a guy working with a space mouse with Autodesk, which is where this, this whole space mouse thing comes from. It's all from CAD and engineering and architecture and that sort of stuff. And we're the very happy, happy beneficiaries of that. Um, 
So these solutions do exist. If you don't have a local workstation, you are not out in the cold. You can definitely make this work for you. Before we go, I want to also talk about mice. This guy over here is from the same company, 3D Connections, and it's a three button mouse. So instead of using button two under the scroll wheel, it has a dedicated button two. And I'd strongly recommend that anybody, regardless of whether they buy a space mouse or not, that is working with Petrel and particularly working in 3D windows, should at least, at the very least, have a three button mouse because it just makes the whole, so if I hit escape in here, the whole panning and zooming so much easier than, than squeezing your finger up to capture the, the button two underneath the scroll wheel, which I think is very imprecise and, and probably not very good for you in the long term. So that's really all I wanted to talk about today. Um, of course, you'll see that there's also a 3D connection keyboard there. The only thing that's really great about this, it's a great keyboard, but the only thing that's really great about this is that I can move the keyboard part of it out of the way and the fact that the mouse actually connects through the keyboard as opposed to going directly to the Bluetooth on the, on the machine because a lot of workstations don't have Bluetooth. But apart from that, that's really all I wanted to talk about. If you have any questions, put them in the comments or get in touch via my website, 3ig.com.au.